Well, hi everyone, <clears throat> and welcome back to the lab. Today, we have a uh, simple and fun activity. Uh, this one is <clears throat> regarding the pH of household uh, substances. So different chemicals that you have in your house. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the <clears throat> pH indicators. Um, we're going to use methyl red and a phenol phthalene. And then lastly, we're also going to use the universal indicator. Um, but the objective for this lab is that hopefully by the time uh, you are done with this, you will be able to, or you will have been able to determine the pH of various substances uh, that you have in your house uh, using indicators. So what I've done is uh, prepared <clears throat> two well plates and included uh, chemicals in each um, column. So for example, uh, the first column, the three wells in the first column contain lemon juice and the three wells in the second column contain um, soda. And I have ammonia, detergent, apple juice, milk, vinegar, and antacid. And before we begin any of the tests, um, what I would like you to do is to take out your um, lab handout. And in the first column, where it says hypothesis, um, what I would like you to do is to write down um, what you think the pH or um, just <clears throat> Uh, rather, if something is acidic uh, or basic. So you don't have to uh, provide the actual pH number, but just simply write next to it um, if you believe that the substance will be acidic or basic. So pause the video, go to your lab handout, and write down your hypothesis um, for each substance. Excellent. Now that you have completed um, your hypothesis, what we're going to do is I'm going to test um, each one of those substances with the indicator methyl red. <clears throat> now, according to your lab handout um, on page two, methyl red is an indicator that is going to take on a pinkish red color below 4.8 and a yellow color above 6. So between 4.8 and 6, um, the indicator will be a mix of, of the two. So neither um, will it be purely red or yellow. So it'll be like an orangey kind of uh, tint. So all we need is a couple drops in each, um, in each well. A couple here since the color seems to be fading away. So we have a, um, I'm gonna give you change um, pipette here so this does not contaminate. One well with the other. It's probably going to need maybe one more in the milk. Okay. So these are the colors that we see um, using methyl red in each of those wells. Next, we're going to use phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein, an indicator that stays clear um, below 6.2, and it turns a very bright um, magenta color above 
So now what you need to do is to pause the video once again and using the color ranges uh, for methyl red and phenolphthalein, you need to provide um, for each substance the possible pH within the closest range, the smallest range that you can find. So again, using, using these color charts here, <clears throat> Try to determine the pH of each substance and you will have a range and try to find the smallest range. So for example, you would say, well, I think this substance could be between 4.8 and 6.2, or this substance could be between 6 and 10.6, or whatever it is that you can find as the closest range using these colors right here. Pause the video and figure out the smallest pH range possible for each substance. <clears throat> As a last step in this, um, in this lab activity, you're going to be able to verify um, if the pH does in fact fall within the range that you predicted and to do that we're going to use the universal indicator and we're going to use the universal indicator because it changes color um, it, the shade of each color changes on a pretty narrow uh, pH range and so you can find this uh, universal pH color chart uh, simply by looking online and looking for universal indicator pH color chart. Now you have the colors and you can hopefully determine that you did the lab quite well. Thanks for being with me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lab and on the lab handout, don't forget to answer uh, the, la the questions. <clears throat> In the end, where many of them uh, pertain to environmental uh, impacts of acids and bases, and such as um, I have questions for you on um, acid rain, of course, um, carbon dioxide emissions, sulfur oxide emissions, and uh, ocean acidification. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for being with me today. Take care.